From the News Channel 5 Network, this is Open Line. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Open Line. Look, a full house tonight. Full complement of guests, and on a hot summer night, it's certainly a good idea to talk about the farmer's market and, and, and the bigger picture here of helping people get access to healthy foods. Have with us Frank True from the farmer's market. Thank you for being here, Frank. Thank you. Uh, Stephen, um, Fran I'm sorry. Francescan. Stephen. Francescan yes. from Piedmont Natural <laughs> yes. Gas. Thank you, Stephen, for being here. And Kyle Williams, Director of Corporate Partnerships from Second Harvest Food Bank. Thank you as well you. for being here. So Stephen, or Frank with Farmer's Market, <coughs> when we're talking about this topic, helping people get access to healthy foods, you know, how, what, what is the Farmer's Market doing here? Well, you know, you, in, in many directions, uh, it's hard, especially for those that are food insecure, to have trouble getting access to healthy foods. Um, it, it's you go to the grocery stores and it, the price points for healthy foods, it's hard for people who uh, don't have a lot of money to be able to purchase those great foods, fresh fruits and vegetables. So farmers markets in Nashville have made a concerted effort to uh, provide local fresh superfoods, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, to everybody. Uh, and these come from local farms. They're not trucked in from you know hundreds of miles away <clears throat> over uh, days and weeks. Uh, and we have made uh, great strides with the help from Piedmont into uh, providing these uh, pr providing these these foods to those in lower incomes through SNAP programs. SNAP is the uh, acronym for uh, what used to be called food stamps. Food stamps, right, mm -hmm. right. Uh, supplemental nutrition assistance programs. Uh, we're able to provide double the benefits through our farmers markets in Nashville, through most of them, uh, and provide people with the benefit of having those great nutritious foods. And I want to get into what Piedmont's doing, but before I do ask you about how big is the problem? When we talk about how many people don't have access to food and, and just some of the food insecurities that are out there, when you, how, how big is the problem in Nashville? Well, in, in Middle Tennessee, which is uh, kind of where Second Harvest serves, about a 46 county service area, um, there's a, one in seven Middle Tennesseans are dealing with food insecurity. And what that means is folks are having to make trade offs throughout the month is do we pay our car note, do we pay our electric bill, or we buy food, or do we pay for our medications, or do we put food on the table? So that's not just one in seven Middle Tennesseans, but that's one in five children. So it's almost 400,000 people in Middle Tennessee. It's a striking amount of people who are making these really difficult decisions every month. Meanwhile, we have a lot of food that's potentially going to be wasted. So at the food bank, what we're trying to do is prevent that food from being wasted and get it to where folks who are making those decisions can access it. And you know this from, from what you do. A lot of, we hear these numbers, one in five children, one in seven, but it's, we wouldn't, we would, that means many of us are coming in contact oh, yeah. with people, but we just don't know it. Right. You think that's right? Uh, it's absolutely right. It's like, you, you don't see somebody and say, oh look, there's a hungry person, right? They're, they're working families. They're folks who are just getting by and you know, maybe somebody's car uh, breaks and suddenly it, it sends them into a financial spiral or someone gets sick and have to go to the hospital. Um, so folks are going in and out of this food insecurity phase uh, quite frequently. So to your point exactly, you, you might know many people who are trying to figure out how to feed their kids every night and you just wouldn't know it. So Piedmont Natural Gas, they're coming up with some ideas here, some programs. Uh, let's go through this sweet potato one first. That's so what's, right. what's, the, what's the situation there? So the situation, uh, I, I must say, is working with uh, great individuals to my right and left and their organizations. Uh, these weren't stock programs. These are uh, kind of brainchilds of these two individuals and really took a lot of work uh, to put planning into them and uh, through uh, grant requests and then also uh, funding uh, on the corporate charitable side as well. On the second harvest side, is, it was kind of an idea to um, capture these wasted sweet potatoes, which is called a gleaning process. So you have a sweet potato field and a farmer uh, that's low cut and it is in Fayetteville, 
Um, Lincoln County. Uh, yeah, Lincoln, yeah. Lincoln County, um, Tennessee. Okay. And, uh, you know, when you go through the process of uh, the mechanical uh, pulling in of all the uh, sweet potatoes, some get left behind. Uh, and then also some are uh, processed that aren't visually appealing for the consumer that you will see in a Kroger or um, straight up in a farmer's market that want to look pretty for uh, to be the first one sold. And those are captured uh, through um, labor going through the field and physically picking them up. And the grant that we um, we started to fund together was um, to pay for that, uh, to pull those sweet potatoes in that would normally go to waste in either rotten field or a landfill and put those on people's tables. And Second Harvest pulls those in and um, distributes those locally to um, organizations. Uh, and then outside of uh, the local Davidson County area, uh, they branch out. And I believe even some Last year, we were able to make some Pennsylvania, I think, to some of the excessive uh, sweet potatoes. We try to make them available wherever we can through our partnership with, uh, with the farmer out in Lincoln County. But just to add on to what Stephen was saying, these sweet potatoes are, are perfect. They're super nutritious. They're great to eat. They're just not meeting an aesthetic standard right. of the primary market. Maybe they're too big. Maybe they're too small. Maybe they're just an unusual shape. And we're able to, uh, as Stephen mentioned, uh, uh, buy those at a super reduced rate from uh, our partner out in Lincoln County. Because nobody else would buy them. Right. right, because if you're looking at a super large potato and two beautiful potatoes, you're going to take the beautiful potato. Right. And what happens is the big one, well, the primary market knows they don't even mess with it in the first place. So is this just one farm, or are there tons is, of farms where you could be doing this? So there are farms all across America that Feeding America Food Banks are partnering with to, to get these uh, seconds, what they call them, is, is not the stuff that goes to primary market, but it's it's just aesthetically not meeting those specs. So we have a network, all the food banks in, in America, and we're able to say, hey, we've got a bunch of cabbage over here from this farm that we can get at five, eight cents a pound, and we move it across to each other. Um, so you're right. It's this is we're just one farm we're talking about in in Lincoln County. He is the biggest sweet potato producer in the state, but um, it's just mind-boggling when you come down to the food bank and you see truckloads of this produce, and we're just we're just scratching the surface with it. It's wild. And can this be done with other? things so there's sweet potatoes can Absolutely. We do it with other, and are we able to do that or what, what about that we are and we do at the food bank we do it with green beans we have a really really massive farm in, in Crossville that we're able to get millions of pounds of green beans from um, through a similar process uh, we also do it with potatoes and cabbage but it really does we need a partner who believes in it that says hey we'll we'll front the cash to be able to get this food it's like a 10x investment on per dollar on the amount of food we're able to provide and we in turn bring those to the food bank our volunteers bag them up and we distribute them to we have about 500 partners throughout middle tennessee that distribute <coughs> our food their food pantries soup kitchens senior centers after school programs wherever we can get food to folks who are in need these sweet potatoes are going out <laughs> so uh, it's awesome to have a partner that sees the opportunity believes in it invests in it makes it happen absolutely to, to put it in perspective it was a two-year program uh, this is our second year that we're starting uh, with the oncoming sweet potato harvest season you know um, I, I believe it was about 470,000 pounds that we have harvested wow. from that one farm. Yeah, uh, that, that is substantial numbers. When you put that into uh, and you equate it to a mill, uh, I think it's around right around 380,000. Yeah, it's almost 400,000 yeah, 400, mills. Is what that equates it. That's what, that's what we're adding to in the community that would go to waste. Of the normally. best kind of food that you could possibly eat is sweet potato. Yeah. There's not very, very many things that are better to eat than a sweet potato. Right, right. So Those are good. Yeah. There are lots of different ways you can make a sweet potato. Yeah. Great nutritional yeah. profile. Yes, we could even get into that <laughs> later. We want. Yeah. And, and that's yeah. a good thing. You would never be able to tell the difference from sweet potato hash to roasted sweet potatoes from uh, these sweet potatoes that aren't appealing, that are rotting, would, would normally rot in the field compared to the ones you see uh, on the store shelves. That is, and that's a great idea. And then, okay, the other thing is the snapback program, right? And now this is through the farmer's market. It is. It but is. okay, let me, we'll ask about that as we set the table for the conversation. Tell us about snapback program. So the snapback program, um, of course, uh, as Frank mentioned earlier, is uh, the food stamp system to where um, you can uh, take advantage uh, wherever they are accepted and uh, to use your um, food stamps, your snap up uh, points uh, to redeem food and other items. Uh, 
you know, and, and it is, uh, you, we could probably debate for an hour on how those are used sometimes and where they are used at. Uh, the farmers markets, which there, there are five that uh, Hip Donaldson helps run and that we accept SNAP um, and EBT cards at. And uh, they are able to go there and buy anything in the market uh, that's food related um, on, that, um, on that SNAPback card. And they'll hang, hand out tokens. Uh, say if you want $20, they'll hand you $20 in tokens and they can go swap that out for farmers for their normal benefits. Um, and, and like Frank uh, mentioned earlier as well, that they are at a great price and it's going directly from the farmer at local farms uh, to the consumer. Now if they choose to spend twenty dollars of their snapback benefits, uh, Piedmont Natural Gas will match them twenty dollars in free fruits and vegetables. So they can buy anything at the farmers market for their first twenty dollars and then an extra twenty dollars in fruits and vegetables will redeem to them. So if they want to buy five dollars, uh, we'll match them five dollars. Uh, so That's great because it, it, there's so many families that don't have that opportunity it, it, and they it, have a limited amount to spend on food and, and maybe they're not spending it on fruits and vegetables. They're, they're yeah. not spending it on nutritious <laughs> foods. But this, this helps them or almost mandates that they do it. I mean, this, this gets that in their grocery sack. This is the fifth year that we've done this and when we first started this the you know the demographics of our market changed dramatically overnight when we started offering the double snap program and you could see children coming through that had never tasted a squash literally mm -hmm. and they would go through and they would say what is this you know what is what is this vegetable and they were they were for the first time able to buy that and it was just absolutely amazing and i'll tell you and some of that stuff it tastes better when it comes right from a farm than if you buy it off of some of course it does you know it, it, the 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 squat the natural sweetness of some of that is just so much better that yeah my kids may not like a squash they get at a, a supermarket but if you eat something right it's off the farm like day. that yeah it's just so it's much better it's it's harvested the day of the market mm -hmm. or sometimes the day before but never m more than that and, and i don't know if you've seen tw 20 dollars worth of vegetables is a lot it's substantial it's a lot i mean you can <laughs> fill up a crate in most instances and and that truly makes a difference in individuals and families lives uh when when they are um using this i mean like you, like you both said earlier you never know i mean more than likely, one of the neighbors that you have uh, lived right next door to has had a food insecurity and mm -hmm. uh, has struggled before, and you'd never know it. Uh, and, and this helps them out, and uh, it kind of educates them too. It's eighty dollars a month. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's take a call here before we go to break. Roger, hello, Roger. Uh -oh. Hi, go right ahead. Uh, yes, my question is: uh, me and my wife live out here in Madison, and there is a second harvest food bank out here. Uh, I wonder where, is there any other healthy food programs in the Madison area? Madison, okay. What do you, what do you say there? This is a great question. We, um, if the caller would call our, call the food bank, we could connect them with, there's, there's several uh, different food pantries in Madison that we can, so we have a network of almost 500 uh, partners that distribute our food, so I unfortunately don't have them all uh, by recall, but if, if, if the caller would call the food bank, we can connect them to the closest food pantry in their neighborhood in Madison. I think he's referring to our emergency food box site that we have right. up there. So and we'll the put answer that, is yes. So the good news is yes, in Madison there is a spot. We'll put the number up Absolutely. Um, Great. a little later in the show, but that that's there are lots of locations. Yes. And right? we, it's we, not like there's one location. Exactly. We're the, the food bank that you might see in Metro Center is just the distribution center. Our goal is to try to get the food out into the community. And like I mentioned, uh, we have food pantries everywhere that are partnering with us to get that food. So uh, happy to connect them that way. All right. And if I may, um, oh, sure, there ahead. is a farmer's food market market. location at Amqui Great. Station in Madison oh, that, that will, if, if he is a snapback recipient, he can go there and have the full match of $20 every week. On Sundays from uh, 12 until 2. I want to talk, all right, we have to take a break, but I want to talk about just the number of locations there are with farmer's sure. markets. Everybody mm -hmm. thinks there's one, well, uh, some people think there's one. Right. Like some of those, that would be me. Like <laughs> it's right here downtown no, and that's where I there's, go. There, but there's more than that. They're all over the place. So we'll talk about that. All right, we'll take a break. If you want to call, there's a the number, 615-737 plus, 615-737-7587. Take a break, be back right after this.